Hi, I'm Bruce Williams. I'm the CEO of the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to Chamber Chats. I would like to begin, as always, by acknowledging that I live and work in the ancestral territories of the Coast Salish people, the Lekwungen language, and the folks of the Songhees and Esquimalt nations, with whom we live and work every day, and we are privileged and proud to do so. Chamber Chats is made possible by the support of Island Savings, a division of First West Credit Union. And we normally, of course, do this in the studios at Czech Television, but... We can't do that right now. So instead, I'm in the chamber office, and my guest we're going to talk to in just a moment here. So how often have you driven down the street, and you come around the corner, you see a big, long lineup of trucks, and you see somebody pulling a cable, and somebody else sets up a light, and then somebody sets up cameras, and then there's action because they're shooting a film. Victoria has become an absolute hub for film production. We're going to talk about that today with uh, the uh, Victoria Film Commission and the film commissioner is Kathleen Gilbert. Hi, Kathleen. How are you? Hi. I'm great. How are you, Bruce? I'm good. So one thing that we noticed, that stuff didn't really slow down during the pandemic, did it? Absolutely not. We Well, that's not true. We did shutter for a couple of months at the very beginning, but uh, came back up really quickly with amazing protocols in place and have had two banner years. Okay, we're going to loop back on that, but let's go back to the back to the very beginning. People have been shooting films here for a long time, and we all kind of know when that happens, and you tune into them, and you look for spots that you know and locations and people in the background. But tell me about the background of film production in this community. Well, the background is we've been making films here since the 40s, really. Uh, people don't understand that. They don't understand that we had the very first film studio in all of BC, back in Oak Bay, back in the 40s. We had the very first film commission in BC in the 70s. And in fact, the BC Film Commission uh, was also here in Victoria down on uh, Store Street. So we have a lot of firsts that have happened here. Uh, you know, we've um, been really busy working away, trying to really build not a location here. We've been trying to build a production center. And I think we're, we're getting really close to having that. Um, yeah, so it's been a, an amazing history of, of film, a filmatic history in Victoria over the years. Yeah, there's a chamber chat from a couple of weeks ago. We spoke with uh, Camosun College and the Malahat Project about their plans for film studios. But what? So what were they shooting here in the 40s? What was going on then? So what happened was Great Britain decided to bring in some regulations that uh, told um, L.A. producers, basically, because back in those days, it was only studio pr pr productions. There was no such thing as independent films. They were all came out of the big studios. And they told them they were really tired of seeing, you know, just American actors, American locations, and all of the money going to uh, Hollywood. So they brought in regulations that said you had to film a percentage, a high percentage, I believe it was 40 or 50 percent of your your products or your pictures each year in a Commonwealth country, in, or, or else they wouldn't show any of your pictures on any screen in any Commonwealth country. So what happened was, of course, Hollywood producers pulled out the big map and looked up to Canada being the closest and you know, Vancouver, Victoria being really the, the closest to LA with the same timeline. And they brought up their their B actors and, you know, they're probably the worst directors they could find. They're the cheapest, <laughs> probably the cheapest with yeah. a few, with a few exceptions um, and made about uh, two dozen what we call quota quickies. And they were really just to fill that quota. And then Great Britain quickly realized that this wasn't working and they pulled that program and Hollywood packed up and went back home. And they really didn't come back until the seventies until mm. our government the BC government started spending money on marketing, built a film studio in Vancouver, uh, started up film commissions, and really tried to woo Hollywood up here. And, and it worked. And, you know, we've, we've had steady growth ever since the 70s, both here in Victoria and in Vancouver. Would we know any of those movies from the 40s? Are there any that you know about that come to mind that were shot here? Uh, I think Convicted with Rita Hayward would be the uh, only one that people might know. They did a lot of filming in Chinatown and they did a lot of filming at both of our castles at the time. And Kathleen um, Dunsmuir was one who financed a few of those films. She lost a lot of money actually, but she financed, <laughs> she financed some of those because she you know, kind of dreamed of being an actress herself. Um, but she wasn't very good. So, uh, and the and the movies that she backed weren't very good. So, unfortunately, she did lose quite a bit of money. But it really showcased uh, Victoria, I think, even back in those days, the beautiful locations that we have. 
Yeah, because I will once in a while uh, dial over Turner Classic Movies on, on television and see all of these awful pictures that you'd never really <laughs> heard of before. But I'm wondering if some of those maybe were the ones that were shot here. Just the, They never went anywhere. They, they weren't good at the time. They're still not good now, but somebody was still making them. But we yeah. did come into, into being in the 70s, like you said. So there was an interesting story about a really popular movie that was shot here. So tell me the story of Five Easy Pieces. Right. So at that time, Brian Small was the CEO of the chamber. And he was he me got at a the call. time. He was you at the time. Yeah. Um, an amazing man, actually, just so creative yeah. and just so forward thinking. Um, he got a call from a big Hollywood producer uh, and they were looking for an island to shoot this little movie on. They called it a little movie. Uh, so, uh, but Jack Nicholson was the star of that little movie. So uh, Brian and some local businessmen decided to invest the money to bring this producer up and scout him around. And they put him out on a boat, drove all around looking at all the Gulf Islands. Didn't find anything really that, um, that this producer liked until they were coming back in around Brentwood Bay. And the producer threw out his arm and said, what's that? And so the... Uh, Guy running the boat pulled up to that dock. Brian got out, knocked on the door, and it was the uh, McPhail, the old uh, McPhail property um, that was owned by the Cormie family at the time. He knocked on the door and said, you know, this is what we're interested in doing. And they said, sure. And so up came um, all of the cast and crew of Five Easy Pieces, and they made about half their movie here and on the waters around Victoria. I've heard it said that actually the guy driving the boat uh, was Bob Wright. From the Oak Bay Marine Group. I think it was, actually. Yeah. yeah. Interesting story. Anyway, so from that has come the industry that we have right now. I want to talk next about not only putting Victoria on, on the map, if you will, of movies, but what this means to our economy. Our guest on Chamber Chat today is Kathleen Gilbert. She's the film commissioner with the Victoria Film Commission for this region. So what happens when we talk about these streets and actors and lights and things making a Hallmark movie? Like that's a huge impact to the economy, isn't it? It's an impact to the neighborhood and it's an impact to the economy. So it's both. It's good and bad. Uh, but yeah, it's huge. Uh, you know, the Hallmark movies that uh, our friends at Front Street Pictures here make, they make uh, six. I think they're hoping to make 12 this year. Wow. Uh, you know, their budgets aren't huge, but they employ a lot of people and they train a lot of people. So when you see those Hallmark movies on your street, you know, we, uh, we appreciate any support that you can give them. Uh, because they are training people and uh, and they're helping to build our economy here. So they're, uh, just to give you a few numbers, we made, uh, I don't know if you want to get into the big tax incentive debacle. Oh, absolutely. We, we oh, yeah. Through. Talk about the tax money. Yes. <laughs> so we've, uh, back in, I um, hope I got my uh, dates right now, 2008, the BC government introduced, uh, because the regions uh, lobbied for it, a distant tax credit, which would be an additional 6%. And these ta tax credits are money that producers get back at the end of the year by employing BC residents. They can only get money back by employing BC residents. So they're labor uh, tax incentives. Um, and so they, uh, the regions lobbied to get this distant tax credit added to the already basic and regional tax credit to give more incentive to producers to move out into the regions, to get out of Vancouver and go out into the regions. For some reason, the government decided to exclude the CRD. So you could film your movie in Duncan and get all of the tax credits. But if you filmed in Port Renfrew or on one of the Southern Gulf Islands, you couldn't. It made no sense at all. So I, I put a lot of work into that, <laughs> to trying to get that changed. And finally, we did get it changed in 2014. They made the change and right away um, we were getting calls as soon as the word got out that we had the full tax incentive. What was happening prior to that where people were coming still, but they were setting up in Duncan and just coming down here for the small percentage that they were allowed to film um, here with and still get their tax incentives. So we were losing a lot of money, unfortunately. We went from probably, um, I think our rates were about six or eight million in direct spend down to about 1.2 million for the years that we didn't have the tax incentive. And then when we got the tax incentive, it started to go up right away. We went up to, I believe, 11 and then 15 and then 19. We stayed at 19 and 20 million for quite a few years until COVID hit. When COVID hit, we did uh, 
55 million last year. I'm sorry, yeah. in 2020. And yeah. then last year we did 59, almost 60 million in direct spend. So that's there's no multiplier attached to that. That's money producers take out of their pocket, spend locally, spend on on both crew and on you know renting cars and hotels and supplies and restaurants and all of that stuff. Yeah, because that's the direct impact that we can all fully understand. You know, the tax thing is one thing, but yeah, they're eating in restaurants, they're doing catering, yeah. they're they're all of that kind of stuff. They're spending um, money. They're going to stores, and none of that is included in that sixty million, almost sixty million. The money that the crew take their dollar, their paychecks, and go spend in your in our community, that's not included. Um, you know, the people that are able to stay here and live with their families and live in their home instead of working in Vancouver and taking some of their pay over there to pay for rent, that that all stays here. Then when we when we build that up, um, and um, you know, we created last year. Over 2,000 jobs in the film industry, local jobs in the CRD. Uh, and many of those jobs were jobs where people really wanted to stay at home and work, um, but prior to that, weren't able to. So we're really proud of the fact that we were able to do that. Are there, you may not know this, or you probably do, are there a lot of people or a number of people that have decided to move here and live here because they can find work in the film industry who were living elsewhere? Uh, yeah, I mean, we have quite a few moving from the east. We don't have a lot relocating from Vancouver because Vancouver is really busy. But uh, I would say we probably get one or two Vancouver industry workers move over here more for the quality of life um, than anything. And uh, because they are you know, A-list or department heads, they know that if they move here, they're, you know, they're probably going to get the jobs that do come here. Um, you know, we had 40 shows last year, and that's, that's quite a bit more than we normally have in, uh, in Victoria. So we're hoping that we can continue to build on that, and then more and more people will see this as a place that they can be employed full-time year-round and, uh, and live and have the quality of life that we all enjoy here in Victoria. Yeah, and you talked about Brian Small and his role in sort of moving the commission out from it was a it was a committee of this chamber, I think, basically is what mm -hmm. it was. Um, the same is the case with Destination Greater Victoria or Tourism Victoria came out of this chamber. Uh, Viatech was originally a, a committee of this chamber. South Island Prosperity Partnership was a committee of this chamber. All of these things were identified th that could grow into being a representation of their own sector. So when that's happened with film, the next step, I guess, the major one is going to be the creation of studio facilities here which as I referred to, we did a, a chamber chat about that a few weeks ago. How much of a game changer is that going to be? Uh, you know, the, the economic impact of that is going to be the big game changer. You know, of course, we'll get, we'll, we'll, it'll build more jobs. It'll certainly employ more people. Um, but really, it's the budgets that we're going to be able to attract. So to give you an example, right now, uh, the television movies that we get here and some of the smaller independent films, their budgets range somewhere between 1.2 million and 7 million, 10 million being on the high end, most of them are around 3 million. If we could if we had a studio, we could attract the big, you know, the really big budgets of starting around 20 million and going all the way up to 200 million. You know, when C was here last year, their budget they didn't spend much of much of it here unfortunately, but their budget was about 200 million dollars. Wow. We did get we did get made and made had a huge budget. I don't know exactly, but we estimate that the budget uh, made was around a hundred million, uh, and that was uh, they spent a lo most of their money here. So they were a big contributor to our economy uh, for sure uh, last year. So made we'll use that as an example didn't do anything to mask where they were. They didn't change signs out. They didn't say Smallville instead of whatever it would. But they just used everything that was ambient that was already here. Very often this region represents somewhere else in the world because they find it more conducive to, to do their filming here. What parts of the world have we represented? Where have we supposed to have been? <laughs> I, I can't think of any that we actually haven't been, but um, certainly we do, you know, we do the West Coast really well because we are the West Coast. So we get yeah. a lot of things that are supposed to be in Portland and Seattle. We get a lot of things that are supposed to be in Europe because we do have a, a little bit of a European. We have a small old town that uh, that can pass for Europe. So it's been, you know, we've been England, we've been Ireland, uh, we've been Scotland. Uh, I, I, I mean, we've done a lot of uh, East Coast as well, although, you know, oh, yeah. we we're, we're, we're have to be a little more careful with what trees we see. 
um, <laughs> because right, yeah. there's no arbutus trees in the in the in the east coast. So um, yeah, but I think we've been uh, you know we were even Mexico a couple of times. So um, <laughs> yeah, we've we're we're able to masquerade really well. Yeah, that Mexico would have been in the summer, I assume. Yeah. But we're talking about films here. We want to talk next, though, about uh, how do we actually get them here? And then we're going to do some name dropping. Today's Chamber Chat is all about the film industry here. And the film commissioner is Kathleen Gilbert. She joined us for our Chamber Chat today. Who, who is it that goes to get these companies to say, come to Victoria, come and shoot your film up here. We're a great well, place. We're nice people. Who's that? That's us. That's, okay. that's, yeah, that's me. I mean, um, we have a very small office here. We're uh, finally three full-time people here. We were two people. When I started, we were one and a half. Um, so we are building as the need builds. Um, however, it's been, last year was incredibly difficult to keep up with the demand with only three people. Uh, but yeah, we do a number of things. We certainly do a lot of outreach over the telephone, um, through email and social media, uh, but you know, we really miss those, uh, those LA trips because they're really important. We haven't been down since before COVID, uh, but just sitting a face to face with the studio executives is really important building those relationships. And it's hard to do that over the phone. It's okay to continue relationships over the phone, but initially to build those, you really need to be face to face with producers and directors, uh, not directors, sorry, producers and execs from uh, the studios. Uh, you know, what's really helped us certainly has been made. Netflix has really noticed us since made. They, you know, they did a few shows before made, but uh, because of made's popularity, they, they're looking at us a lot more now. So we've been doing quite a few packages for a Netflix series. Uh, we haven't landed any yet, but um, for next year, but we're coming pretty close. So that's really helped just having one really good show. Uh, brings us attention to us for sure. You know, Netflix has this uh, great website that everybody should go check out called uh, Netflix in Your Neighborhood. And it is a map of basically the world that shows all of the places that Netflix has done series so that you can go and see them. You can, it puts on the map pin, pinpoints of where scenes from made for example were filmed and then you can go visit them and it's got little uh links to the municipalities that made was filmed in so it's been an amazing um, i think not just um hopefully uh to attract tourism so film tourism but also just to bring more attention not just to victoria but to greater victoria and um, we're just so pleased to be on that map right now because not everybody is must be a lot of word of mouth, too, among the producers who talk about how great their experience was in Victoria and how great the Film Commission is and how it was a pleasure to be here and do all of that stuff. I just mentioned earlier about name dropping. So um, I just recently watched Broadchurch for the first time. Amanda and I love these British murder mystery things. So a version of Broadchurch was shot here a couple of years ago. Who else has been here? What, what sort of big names have been here? You mentioned Maid. That was Andy McDowell. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter, Peter Dinklage was here doing something. So was Shirley MacLaine. But do some name dropping for me. Who else is shot in this area? <laughs> well, I mean, we have all, everybody, because we've done three X-Men, we've had all of oh, yeah. those, ha the Halle Berrys and the Hugh Jackmans. Um, you know, Richard Gere has been over here filming. Uh, boy, I... I I wish I had been more prepared. I could have had a whole <laughs> list for you, Bruce. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, a lot of people have been here and a lot of actors really enjoy being here. You know, it's one of the things that, you know, some of the smaller communities that want to build a film industry, it's difficult if you don't have five-star hotels and, you know, a gold seal or I don't think they call them five stars, but five spoons, however they rate restaurants. They rate the chefs, yeah. Yeah, the, right. We have some amazing restaurants here. We have great hotels. There's things for them to do. If you can imagine if you're an actor and you're offered a show in some little town and you know you're going to be there for years because hopefully it's going to be a good series and it's going to get picked up. But even if you're there for a year like Made. You want to be somewhere where there's things to do. Uh, and so we really sell that part of Greater Victoria when we're selling to producers that not only do we have amazing locations and world-class crew, we have amazing restaurants and we have great hotels and you're going to be happy living in this town, I can guarantee it. And many of them are. Yeah. 
Uh, Nick Nolte is another name. I remember him doing something in Oak Bay not long ago. But the experience for the actors, uh, um, or if you will, the stars of these shows, they maybe sometimes want to be someplace where people are going to leave them alone, that they're not going to get mobbed. That must be a pretty good experience for them here. Yeah. I mean, we still have people that stop the stars, but um, I think most of them, people don't expect to see the stars here. So uh, unless they know they're here, they're, you know, they're going to just think it's somebody that looks like somebody, right? (laughs) Um, Because we're just not used to it. It's not like Vancouver where you're used to seeing, you know, or expect that if you see someone that looks like a star, it probably is that star. So I think that certainly is uh, attractive as well. But, you know, it's um, also just the services that our hotels give these stars is amazing. You know, they often will have separate entrances for them to come in. They're very good with keeping confidentiality, you know, as we are sometimes painfully so. Mm. Um, So, yeah, I think you're right. I think they do enjoy a little bit of um, anonymity when they're here. And we we talk about the capacity with the studios being built. Can we be doing more of that sort of on-location shoot at one of the castles, downtown, Colwood, wherever it might be? Do we have capacity to do more of that now? Well, we've been building our crew. You know, we lost a lot of our crew when the distant tax credit came into play. Uh, A lot of people uh, moved away. A lot of them went back to, you know, what we call the real world jobs, um, you know, back into other industries or industries they worked in prior to the film industry. Uh, We did have some people that were able to hang on or some people that, you know, relocated to Vancouver and now have moved back. But we've we've been struggling to build our crew uh, back up. We had uh, a probably what we call too deep, which means enough to service two full productions back when the distant tax credit hit. And then when it hit, we lost, we were down to minus one. I mean, we were below one. We're back up now to uh, over three. So we're, we are building, but we definitely need more um, worker bees. Yeah. Well, we look forward to that. And I know that there will probably very soon be a Hallmark movie shot here about a young woman who gets jilted by her lover and takes her daughter and comes back home to live with her mother for a while, but then she runs into an old flame who drives a pickup truck and they live happily ever after. I and just I I would put money on that first. <laughs> it's such a great story. Kathleen, we'll catch up with you again later, but thanks for everything that you and the Film Commission do to put us on the map and generate that economic activity. Anything we can do to help your organization, what can people do? Well, you know, we're always, because we're nonprofit, we're always looking for members. It's $30 uh, a year, so it's real cheap uh, to be a member of the Film Commission and help us out, and you get some perks with that. And, of course, we're always looking for corporate sponsors. Great. Kathleen Gilbert is the Film Commissioner for Greater Victoria. Thanks for being with us. That's Chamber Chats. I'm Bruce Williams. We'll see you again soon. 